today is Tuesday, January 21st, 2014. Mm -hmm. And I'm here in the home of Miss Felicity Fuller, and I'm going to talk to her about her memories of Denham Springs and her experience in growing up in the church here. And my name is Sarah Colombo. I'm the head of adult services for the Livingston Parish Library. Can you go ahead and introduce yourself? I am Felicity L. Fuller. I've been here in Denham Springs all my life. And um, now, when I first, I lived on the Satoon. Place. I was born, I think, on the Satoon place. And then uh, my parents moved uh, from there to the Eastly place. And call from, from, from there. Eight, seven, so pause it. seven, two, uh, three, stop it. seven, zero, five, one, uh, two. Then after the, then we moved to down uh, Hatcher Lane near the railroad track in the um, quarters, they call them, so many quarters. From there we moved up here, at that time it was called Rodeo Drive, uh, a home. We bought this land, and this piece of land, at 206, what was known as Rodeo, but since then they have changed the name to uh, 206 Martin Luther King. And that's where you are now? That's where I'm at now. What, when were you born? I was born July the 17th, 1930. And what were your parents' names? My parents was Mel K. Fuller and my mother was Ellen Scott Fuller. And did your parents grow up here as well? My, no. My parents came here from White Castle. I guess they'll be Iberville Parish. Uh, he came in from here. And him and his brother Ezekiel. And he married my mother, who was born down around Hope Villa, down in that area and they moved up here. Do you know your parents' birthdays? My father's birthday is December the 25th, um, 1900. My mother's October the 26th, 1906. And what were their jobs? What was their work? Their jobs? Uh, my father saw me and farm. And uh, my mother did was housework. Did you have any siblings? I had one brother, and uh, he was much older than I was. He was about ten, to ten years older than me. What was his name? Wilbur White. And um, do you know his birthday? Do you know his birthday? You're not sure. March the fourth. 1922. Okay. Um, so you were the youngest. You were the youngest child. Yes. Um, how far back of your family history do you know? Do you know your grandparents? Well, I know what they told me about. I know, I remember my grandmother, uh, Mary Kay Scott. I can remember her, but her husband was dead. And I just remember, they say his name was Sid in the Sky Singing. That's all I can remember. Okay. I never seen him or nothing. That was all you'd heard of from your family too? You don't know the names of your other grandparents? Uh, my grandfather on my daddy's side was named Richard Fuller. And he was living in New Orleans at the time of his death. Now. Oh, um, I don't know nothing about his birthday or nothing like that. And and uh, his wife was named, oh, what was that woman's name? I think it was Elizabeth. Okay. But I don't know nothing about their birthday or nothing like that. And uh, they never lived here in Dennisburg. 
just by my mama's people. So did you go to school here in Denham Springs? Yes, I did. I went to, uh, let me see, what was that school called? It was right there, right there where that filling station is, right on in that area. Yeah, right there on one night in front of McDonald's. Mm -hmm. I went there. And then when they moved the school over here on Rodeo Drive, I was in high, and then I got ready to go to high school. I took two classes at, they called it West Livingston. And I took two classes there. And the rest of it, I rode the Greyhound bus to uh, Baton Rouge. I even graduated from McKenna in Baton Rouge. Okay. Mm -hmm. What year did you graduate? 1950. And what did you do after you graduated from high school? Well, I did, I went to Leland College for a while. And my mother got sick and I had to drop out. She stayed sick so long till, see, because I was the only one girl, you see. And she stayed sick so long. And I just didn't want to go back to school. I was scared to leave her, and uh, even though I was encouraged to go on back, but uh, that was my mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, so finally, uh, I went to work for a man named Bob Gain. He used to own the Western Auto up there on, on Main Street there in Dunham. And I go to work at eight and get off at eleven. And I did that. And uh eight AM to eleven PM? Uh -huh. Eight AM until eleven PM? Eleven eleven to eight eleven to eight AM. Oh okay. And uh, then I used to work down at the Lee they had a cafe in the America a Legion Hall there. I worked there for a while. And um, so then finally I got the job at um, in East Baton Rouge Parish working as a cook in a school. And uh, I worked in that parish 32 years. When did you retire? 1995. Do you have any children? I have two. One is in Florida, the oldest one is in Florida. The youngest one is here with me. And uh, she have finished college and she got a master's degree and she worked for RIS. What's RIS? Internal Revenue. Oh, 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 okay. What's her name? Larky. Larky Fuller? No, she's Larkin Kyle now. And what's your other child's name? Ralph D. William. Um, so I know you have a lot of experience growing up in the church here in Denham Springs. Can, mm -hmm. you, can you talk about that experience? Well, at the church, uh, when the church started, it started from like a prayer band. My mother always told me. And so when they got ready to form the church, they uh, she was pregnant during the time with me. And so they formed the church in 1930. And when I was four years old, I guess I was about four years old. Might have been a little old, I don't know. Might have been six. But in a high, I wanted to be baptized. And I was baptized and I've been in the church ever since. What's the name of the church? Midway Baptist Church. Where is it? Uh, what is it? 1004 Hatchet Lane. And uh, I worked as a Sunday school teacher, uh, secretary of the Sunday school, President of the Senior Choir, President of the Mission Department, and now, I might be on the left side, now 
uh, financial secretary of the church. So have you seen a lot of changes at the church? Yes, I have. I have seen people leave the church and form another church. And I have seen them, you know, come and go like that. And uh, here not too long ago, not too many years ago, I forgot when it was, but uh, people came in the church, they joined the church, and they know more about the church than the pastor did. <laughs> they wanted to take over everything, but they couldn't do it. They didn't live here, they lived in Baton Rouge or Baker one, but they came here in John Church because they was friend to the pastor. And so that was the last breakup of the church. I have seen the church broke up about one, two, by three times. But we still stood. But one time we got into seventeen members. And we see Holiday Brooks Gray. I'm trying to think of how many pastors we have had during that time. The church was originated with Reverend J.L. Holiday. And then Reverend Frank Brook took over. And then Reverend Gray. Reverend Gray was the pastor 43, I believe it was 43 years. Might be, might be more. Gray? Uh-huh, G-R-E-Y. And they had a preacher to come there. He stayed about two months. And uh, now we got uh, Reverend Jesse Williams is the pastor now. So you had Reverend Holiday. Who was after him? After who? Reverend Holiday. Reverend F. C. Brooks. Then Reverend Gray. And then this you know, man will come after him. I don't even know what. I don't. Even, I can't even think of his name. And then after him, you had Reverend Williams. Mm-hmm. Um, were there any? I guess. Prominent people who are members of your church that you remember? People who have been in the community for a long time? <clears throat> I can't think of. My uncle, my dad's brother, he's a member of the church. And that was a. Oh. Um, I'm trying to say. We had a man, uh, they call him Jack Mason. He 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 was in the origin of the Midway Baptist Church. And he was there for him. Until they, his, his uh, son came and got him and moved to Baton Rouge. And, uh, And where the church was, I don't know no more. And we, plenty of older people was there, but they dead and gone. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember. And um, I just can't remember their name. Were there any, what were the big kind of events in the church? life that you remember? Any big events that y'all had or get-togethers or anything? Yeah, we used to have things at the church they call sack rally. And it had churches, we invite churches to come and whatever one raised the most money, they would get this, they passed, we get the sack of grocery. I remember that. For him to use or to give out? 
it was all brought to the church. You brought your pounds to the church and they put it in the sack. And whatever church that did the they, they got the they they got everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> we got the money and they got the grocery. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And so now where the church is at now, church used to be across the road from where it is now on Hatchet Lane. We're having a church called a fall. Uh, I don't know how or nothing but the church burnt. And with the church burnt, this lady crossed in front of the church. They swapped land. She took the burnt land and gave the church, which was a half an acre each. That's the way it, it wasn't no money swap in it. It was just swap another land. And we still there. What year did the church burn down? Now that, I've been racking my brains and looking around. And I had said I was going back to Dunn Spring News to find out. But after I got on this walker, you know, it's a certain length of the, so much you can do and so mm -hmm. much you can't do. <clears throat> Do you remember about how old you were when it burned down? I was grown, mm -hmm. but I can't. And when it burned down, we had church in uh, in the funeral home on Cross Street. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Had Sunday school there, and the church on East Street let us go to and the communion. Did your church do... Um you mentioned the sack rally. Did you do other pro events where you banded together with other churches in the area? Yeah, like uh, they gave the pastor the appreciation, and um, and from at least they still do this. Like the ushers, they invite ushers from other churches to come in and fellowship with them. Then we we'll go to other churches. The uh, mission department, we did the same thing, and and then uh, the church belonged to a association. They made River Progressive Association. I worked in that. I just I worked in that about a couple of years ago. My health fell because. The seats out there were, some of them was too low. And I wasn't gonna haul no pillow around. Mm -hmm. Just said, uh, I do it here at the house. And uh, so, uh, all I can say, wherever the church need me to work at, I work there. Like now, it ain't too much that I can do, but that secretary room, financial secretary. Oh, my mother was financial secretary of the church. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Uh -huh. And uh, and my mother held every office in the church that a woman could hold except pastor. And I have been walking right in her footsteps. Seems like you're pretty close. Have you done the same thing, or are there some you haven't held yet? All except the president of the Usher Bowl. And, uh, and my daddy was the leading deacon of the church for a while. You know, well, for years. Yeah, him and the pastor fell out. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he put another gentleman there. The pastor got another gentleman, moved him up to there. And that didn't last long. Last too many years. And uh, all I can tell you, we're still working back there, trying to raise money to for the building of the funds of the church and everything. <clears throat> what um, when you taught Sunday school? What age group did you teach? Uh, junior. 
the junior, they'll be like from 11. I think I had 11, 12. Yeah, 11, 12. 11 and 12th grade or 11 and 12 year olds? Age. Okay. And what, um, when did you do that? Oh, I did that. I don't know exactly what year. But I tell you, going back, try to remember something 20, 50 years ago, mm -hmm. it's hard. So I don't, I can't exactly tell. But I talked to Sunday school and then after I became, then I became, whilst I was teaching this at Sunday school, oh, that's when they had to have a secretary and they put the secretary. And so, now, I was raised when people come in to visit my parents, I disappeared out door. I just stayed down to my parents and listened at what they said and what they talked about. My children, the same way, I didn't have to say go play. My daughter adopted a little seven year old little girl, 11 months, and she's seven years old. That's her right up there. And uh, I adopted her, and uh, she said, Mama, is she gonna stay long? I said, I don't know why. Cause I'm gonna go outdoors and play. Mama might not let me go outdoors and play. I said, go on outdoors and play if you want. <laughs> you know, she didn't want to be in here with the grown people. And I said, I said that's really why so much happened. The parents let the children hear too much what they didn't need to hear. Now that's that's my theory. So when you were raised, the children were kept separately from the adults. Yeah, the it was life. a time we got together and everything. But say, if you were coming to visit me, and we sit down talking, we we was raised not to sit down up on the and listen to every word for word. We were outside and play. And uh, and enjoyed ourselves out there. Mm -hmm. And when you leave, we go, bye, bye. Mm -hmm. When you come back. What kind of things did you do for fun when you were a child? Well, well I played with my doll, because I did have a, had a doll. And, um, we played little games like jumping ropes, hopping skies, stuff like that. We went to the show. It wasn't much for you to do. It wasn't nothing for you to do, you know. It didn't have no activity or nothing. The show was about the oldest activity you had. And I go to the show. How much did it cost to go? I don't know, it looked like I remember paying a nickel and a dime one time. I can't remember exactly how much it Cause now they got an antique shop in that show up there in Denver. That theater was segregated when you were a child? Yes. yes. So you had to sit in the balcony? Yeah, we, almost, yeah, we sat in the balcony. Um, I think the last show I went to the, at that show, movie I went at that show, they were showing Going With The Wind. And I can't be able to tell you what Going With The Wind was now and what to <laughs> And oh yeah, I had to walk. We had to walk to school. How far was it? Um, up there by Dental Spring High. And uh, we'll walk. 
And so some morning we'd be coming to school. The train be on cross the track and everything. And uh, it'd be sitting still. But I just scared to go up on that train. I would be too. I remember I got a whooping for that because I was late. I, some other trail was up on that train. I said, I didn't know when that train was going to move. I didn't go up on that. I could have tripped and fell across that rail and got cut half in two. I said, I was, well, if the other children did it, you could too. And I got a whooping about it. By your teacher? Yeah. And I remember uh, my mom and daddy went and visited with that teacher and said, I'm sure they got no business going on that train. You know the train was across the track and everything. And why would you put, those, put my daughter about it? And so they found a, I don't know what, what was done about it, what, but I know my parents visited with the teacher about it. And another teacher whooped me one time and my mama said she was going to law about it because she whooped with a belt. She whooped with a switch. And I don't forget what you call those switches, but they don't break. And I was all whipped up. And my mama carried me to the doctor. And it happened as a family of people, which was home, the teacher, mom and daddy. They, they just big mama. They don't turn an end to the law. And, uh, and I don't know, I grew up, didn't care nothing for that teacher after then. Mm -hmm. Never did care anything for. Do you remember any teachers that you really liked? Yeah. Not here in my elementary years. <laughs> But in, in uh, high school, I had some good teachers. And I really liked them. But my elementary teacher, I can't say I really, I could do without them. What kind of um, holidays were really important for your family when you were growing up? Oh, um, Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I remember when my mama used to, when she go to cooking for Thanksgiving, she'd make her cakes for Christmas. And I had one brother, as I say, and we ate cake all the way to Christmas. And when my mother turned in for Christmas, when she turned them around, she see what well, we done cut all her cakes and everything. And I often wonder, stuff don't spoil not like it used to. So them cakes was a mold and everything, but they didn't. And uh, so really, I can say that was, that was big days for my parents and uh, but we would go from house to house. I can remember they make it eggnog and they would put a little whiskey in their eggnog and just give us the eggnog. And we was just know we was drinking whiskey too, long without our prayer. But Thanksgiving and Christmas was our big day. So you, did you have any other traditions? I know you said the eggnog and the cake. Well, since my mother, you know, I never didn't know how to make it. When they beat them eggs up and put them in hell that for I never learned how to make it. So we don't we don't fool the egg no one now. What'd y'all do for Christmas? Well, they did you have any special food or any kind of special tradition that you did at Christmas time? Uh our special special for Christmas was a 
a homemade gritty coconut cake. I used to know to be homemade and great those good. I can remember the great those coconut for my mother. And uh, and a chocolate cake. Now those two things still is with the only thing now I don't have to grate the coconut, I can go buy the frozen coconut and cook it there mm -hmm. and put it on my cake. And that's what I was thinking about just now making the cake. Was I gonna put chocolate on or coconut? Which one I was gonna put on? So, but that chocolate cake and that coconut cake, it was our favorite cake. Do you have any other recipes that were passed down to you from your mom or your grandmother? I'm ready to say. The lemon meringue pie, I have that recipe. Mm. And cornbread dressing was passed on to me by my mom. So, I used to love to cook. But now the doctor don't even want me around the stove. Mm -hmm. But I slips into it every now and then. When you celebrated Christmas, was it just you and your parents, or did you have cousins and uncles? We had uh, uncle and cousins and things to come in. And like I said, we get up on Christmas morning. Maybe we go to some one of go to my uncle's house. They drank eggnog and everything. We eat. We love the ham and stuff. We leave that house there and go to somebody else's house. You know what's around. And when they end it up, they end it up back at our house. Looked like we was the main rain niggas. And, and I enjoyed that. I think Christmas was more lovely then than it is now. Christmas, not like last Christmas, don't even seem like it was a Christmas. It was just another day. I don't know whether because I'm sick now and I can't get around and do like I desire what. But, but I thank God I was living to see it. Um, what do you, do you see any kind of major I'm sure you do. What kind of differences do you see between the way Denham Springs was when you were growing up and the way it is now? Well, one thing, it had built up so much. I was telling a lady, it was yesterday, we was talking. I said, if they keep a building an apartment and thing here in Denham Springs, they don't be nowhere to raise a little garden. Because they really have built up. Now, McDonald used to didn't be there. Right there where uh, Alverson is, they used to have a swimming pool there. They see, now there's Alverson. Going down Range Avenue, they didn't have all of that. Post office right up there. And uh, you could go to the post office and get your mail. There wasn't no, we know they have mail delivered to us. They go to the post office again. And most stores is in here. And more people have moved in the Dunham Spring. Because it had been a time that we know they all by by name in, in Dunham Spring. And that's just how small it was. And then everybody comes to come in. And, um, and like I said, the school was right there, uh, where that filling station was in front of uh, McDonald, and that's where I finished up. Uh, what it was me? I don't forgot what year they moved, but I know I went to Baton Rouge for the ninth grade. Then I came back to Dallas Spring, and they had added the tent 
I, I had added the 11 and they had 11 and 12th grade. I came back and uh, I took the 11th grade. Then I had to go back to McKenna to get the 12th grade. Why'd you have to go back? Because they didn't have it here. Oh, they didn't have 12th grade yet? Mm-mm. And so, riding that bus, I get up in the morning, catch the bus, mm -hmm. ride to school, and I was going to McKenna, and we had to sit around, wait the time for the bus to come in the evening, time to come back home, and everything. And we had some good bus driver, and then we had some mean bus driver. And I never forget a man. Every time we go to get on the bus, he put his foot out in the aisle. And I had to ask that man to let me buy every morning. I said, you better not put your foot out there in the morning. The man put his foot out there and I got along there. I just picked up my foot and I stomped it. He is. I said, oh, excuse me. And those, that was the funniest thing to them people on that book. Because they know I deliver stuff that we didn't have no more trouble, no foot now. And the driver said, you ain't have no business with your foot out there now. See, because he watched through that glass, you know, what's going on. And we always had to stop. That broke that up. And that man was from Satsuma, i never forget. <laughs> He's on his way to work. And that evening when we got ready to come back home, catch the bus to come home, he was on that bus. And, uh... He had went and got him a slip and pulled his feet because it had swollen, so. And I didn't weigh but uh, about 110 pounds. <laughs> but I put it on them. Because the man was speaking. We was we had to go to the back of the book. So why he want to put his foot out there and mess with us like that? But that bus driver, I never forget his name, Mr. Frederick. He was meaner than a bulldog. Ooh, that was a mean man. And he was bigger than, but he looked out for us children on the bus. And, and so he had, my cousin worked at the Greyhound bus stand. He asked him, this my cousin, what is her name? And he told her. He said, I will remember her. And there was more when I got on that bus after that. Good morning, Phyllisy. But that man who said something didn't say nothing. And didn't put his foot back out there neither. Y'all had to take the, um, just the city bus that took everyone to work? Yeah, after we got the Greyhound, we caught the city bus to go on out to the school. And I tell them children now, I say, you all got it good. I say, you don't have to leave Dunn Spring to get a 12th grade education. And, uh, well, they had a, a bus came through here going to Southern. But I never rode that bus because I didn't go. Time I did go to college, I went to a Leland College. That was up in Baker. Well, I lived with a lady up there in Baker. And I didn't have no further walk by from here to the front of McDonald's, the school where I stay in there. And finally that woman come home with a devilish cat and I had to move because I'm allergic to cats. But she was an old lady. Mm -hmm. What places do you remember the most from when you were growing up? Mm -hmm. Do I remember them more? I can't tell you because I was born and reared here in Dunn Spring. So therefore, like every year, the school used to go to Donaldsonville to the, to the fair. And that's about the size of it. 
What kind of places in Denham Springs did you spend a lot of time? Maybe going to the show. But there wasn't nothing else for us to do. Mm -hmm. Who were your neighbors when you were growing up? Do you remember their names? Um, they had a neighbor named all sand Lockhart and his daughter's name Martha and Emma. Then Miami Knox, Jake Knox and Miami Knox and Elliot Lockhart and his wife and uh, John Weston Scott, Scott. But he wasn't no kin to us Scott. And then that was my, that was our neighbor. That was on the same street? Well, we, they lived direct on Hatcher Lane. And we lived kind of back. But those, those was our neighbors. You know. They, they had a white family. That, that was back there, they called them Lee McNair. And uh, they was neighbors to us, we was neighbors to them. Mm. Cause uh, my mama went and this Miss McNair got sick. My mama went there and waited on the scene to her. And uh, mama got sick, she'll come do the same for mama. And uh, it was good relationship there. And now all that's incorporated in Cockermakers now. Do you remember um, any big world events when you were growing up, like the Great Depression or when World War II started? Did that affect you at all? Mm-mm. You didn't know anyone who went to war or anything? Well, most of my people that went to war, I didn't come to older people. I didn't come to know them until after the war was over. And that's when I, I didn't know them before the war or nothing mm -hmm. like that. So things have kind of stayed the same around here? Mm -hmm. Like I told you, everybody knows everybody. Well, do you have anything specific that you'd like to pass along to people when thinking about the history of Denham Springs and how it's changed or anything? No, I don't. Because Denham Springs is growing so till I, I just don't really know. Is there anything that you think people, younger generations, should know about the way it used to be in Denham Springs? <clears throat> no, because I guess most of the parents don't told them. Yeah. Because, uh, like my dad used to farm, he raised strawberries and beans like that. And I can remember, I learned how to pick them berries out and pack them in things and we would bring them down here to the depot. And beans, uh, I never did pick too many beans uh, because my daddy had people hard out that they would come and when they get a hamper for, I was the paymaster, I'd go pay them. I, now that was enjoyment to me. I enjoyed doing that. And, um, and, and now I sit down and think, how did people make it back there in those days? Because they wouldn't pay 
you didn't get a dollar a hamper, I don't think they paying 50 cents a hamper then. And if people could take that little money, you can go buy your grocery and everything. Oh yeah, in the grocery part. My grandmother used to send us to the store, get me a nickel worth of lard, nickel worth of flour, nickel worth of sugar, and a nickel worth of beans, stuff like that. And that would last a whole week. And still they couldn't save no money. And now, you can't get a nickel worth of lard wouldn't be a teaspoon of food. And the cost of living wasn't that high. Do you have anything else that you want to share? Any other memories or anything? I don't know nothing else to share. But it looked like to me the food, what they raised, like potatoes, beans, mustard green, and they raised their own hog. We raised hogs. And some of the hogs I used to ride, they were just that big. And way they did, say, if we kill a hog this month, all them people I named off to you would come and help daddy with that hog. All of them would get a mess of meat from that. Maybe next month somebody else will kill a hog. All the neighbors will fall in there and help them. And had the smokehouse where they used to smoke that meat. And the meat tastes better than it did now. And I often wonder, they cook those crackling out. Cook that fat out. And uh, mom used to cook with that, that grease. She didn't buy no lard and like that. She'd cook with it. Then finally got so it wasn't good for your health. I don't believe you buy pure lard in the store now. In them little buckets. And, uh, and the crackling. Mom used to take that and make soap out of it. To wash our clothes, scrub with. And I remember one day we were running out of soap and my hair need wash. I took a bar of that soap and went in there and washed my hair with it. It didn't do nothing to my head because it's just that live meat was, was cooked down to the soap. And didn't have no manolia and stuff like that on the floor. But we had pretty flows because we of that soap what we was using. And they tell me some people still make lots of soap, but I wouldn't know. They had that big old on wash pot that they was taking them, put all that stuff in and stir it in there and cook it. And when they get cold, they turn it out and then cut it into it. Ball. I can remember that. Cause my mama used to do it. And, um, and mama used to take one thing she she was teaching me how to do, but I never could get it. That's how to you hear them talk about cracking bread. I never could get my cracking bread to go all the cracking go all through my bread. When you cut it, you be cutting crackers from the top to the bottom. All my cell to the bottom of the pan. I never did get it to work good. How's crackling bread made? Cornbread. And when you make up your cornbread, put the crackers in there. Fry it up together. Mm -hmm. Cook it. Bake it. Mm. And they used to clean the chillings. Well, I go to the store and buy me some chillings right now. Some of them clean, some of them comes in the bucket. I clean, I get so pre clean one. When I get through with them, I sit down and cut them, put them on the ball, cook them, and then season them down and everything. And, um, 
Now people use sale like a if they if they present have a problem they working for the church. They could go get chitlins and they'll still like them before they will fish. Fried fish. Mm. This Pee Wee they used to laugh at me about I said, Mr. Pee Wee, you can say you want. I love my children with some cornbread, rice, and gravy and English pea. He said, well, you eat them. Because I, I did part-time work for them till I got disabled after I retired. Because when I retired, I could have kept on working. But I got mad with my manager. And rather than lose my retirement, it's best for me to come out of there. And uh, so... So you worked for Mr. Peabody, who's that? Mr. Peewee Day, he used to be a uh, used to be a real estate man. Mm. He died when it was last year, I believe it was. Is your are your parents buried around here? Yes. What cemetery are they buried in? Plainview Cemetery. What year did they pass away? One passed away in 83 and then passed away in 89. Which one? My mother was 83 and my dad was 89. Is your brother still alive? No, he's not. What year did he pass away? Oh, um, he passed in uh, 2 uh-uh, 1994. Anything else you'd like to share before we end? I don't know nothing else to share. Well, I shared some good stuff. Okay, this is the end of my interview with uh, Miss Felicity Fuller. Again, the date is Tuesday, January 21st.